Right, a bit of putting. Now I'm sure you see guys on the putting green every day doing this, just batting two balls backwards and forwards constantly and missing and reinforcing the fact that they always miss out on the golf course. Now if you were to ask them what they're doing, they'd probably say, I'm practicing my putting. But they're not really. They're just burning up four or five minutes of the clock before they go to the first tee. I mean, if you were gonna actually practice your putting, you'd get down behind the ball, you'd have a look at the line. You might even go and put up a, a tee peg as your target for how much break you think there is. And you would test to see whether you were actually hitting it on the correct line and whether your eyesight, the reading of the greens, was actually correct. So they're not practicing their putting. Another answer you might get is, oh, I'm getting a feel for the greens. Well, since when did this green bear any relation to the greens out there? I mean, I can think of two clubs near here, off the top of my head, where the greens are at least two feet faster than the real greens. I don't know why they do it, they just do it. So if you go there and you practice your 15, 18 footers backwards and forwards for five minutes, when you get out on the golf course, your first putt is going to be four feet short. And then you'll miss that because you didn't practice your four footers. And you've started with a three jab. I can think of another two courses where they only cut the practice green outside the clubhouse once a week. So it's always much slower than the real greens. So how do you practice your putting? That's the question. Well, if you actually want to practice putting, and do something useful, first off, get this thing out the hole. And the next thing is, is actually measure off a distance. So I'm going a putter and a grip. And I'll mark it. And then on the other side, There you go, I've done exactly the same thing. I better just check to see if all this is in view. So now you've got your distance, you've got the flag out the hole, so you can actually hear the ball go in the hole. You pick something with a little bit of break. So this side, it's a little right to left. And you pick your spot and you concentrate on one blade of grass. And you get that lovely rattle, although that was a bit of a splash because we've had so much heavy rain. Concentrate on that one blade of grass. Now there isn't a lot of break on this, granted, but it is not the middle of the whole putt. That one blade of grass again. That's three that way. So now let's do the reverse putt. So, excuse my ass, because I can't be bothered to move the camera. So we've had the right to lefter. This is the left to righter. Oh, I've got a wet hand. Let's have get down, have a look. Now because it's a similar putt to the one I've just hit from the other side, it's now a singular blade of grass over here. And that's how narrow your target is. You make your entire life about one blade of grass in the back of the hole. Yep, they do miss. Right. Now, I've missed two, so let's drag those back and have a second look. Let's have a second look at the break. It is the right place, but obviously what I'm doing from this side is pulling it a little bit. 
Well, I'm not getting lined up properly. Well, I'd rather be doing this here than on the golf course, wouldn't you? We've finally got one. I don't know why, but it's not moving as much as my eyes tell me it's moving. But that's why we practice, and this is the best practice. Yeah, I've only just dribbled that in. So this is how we gain confidence. Now, the other week, I shot my handicap out on the golf course in a competition. And I hold every single one of these that I looked at, because this is what I practice. And when you can hold every single one of these, all of a sudden, a 40-footer doesn't seem that daunting. Because you know that if you get it slightly wrong, four feet wrong, you've got it. I don't know why I'm holding them better from this side than that side. much better pace from this side, isn't it? The, from the other side, I was dribbling him. It also takes all the pressure off chipping. You know, you don't have to chip to six inches, four feet. Now for you mathematicians amongst you, you can work out how big an area this is. We're looking at a circle that's eight, nine, or even ten feet in diameter. That certainly makes life simple. Right, let's try from this side again. And see if I can get a better pace on the ball. Right, so I'm going to aim a little more inside the hole. And put a little bit more speed on it. I don't know if it's because of the rain, but for whatever reason, from this side, it isn't wanting to turn. I wonder if I'm looking for it instead of listening for it. <laughs> this is quite funny, but at least I'm missing, you know, I mean, we, it shows I'm not perfect. I wonder if it's the way they've mowed the green. Because these are kind of like turning up the hill. See, even in England you get a bit of grain. Although well, the grain is always supplied by the mower as opposed to the direction the grass grows. Yeah, that just wants to turn left. That is, that is grain. That is not something I'm used to seeing. Yeah, from here, it just wants to turn left. Isn't that peculiar? Anyway. This is the most useful part of practicing your putting. Is to go right to left, left to right on a four footer. This is of more use to you out there on the, in the real world on the golf course than just batting 15 footers backwards and forwards. I mean, you get the impression that pros hole every 15 footer they look at. Yeah, the guy who's on, in the lead and on the TV, he's holding a lot of putts. But the guy who made the cut on the number and comes in 68th place, he doesn't. 
when you start looking at the averages for 15 footers, they're about 30% at best. And then you look at our averages for 15 footers and you're getting down to 5%. Because out there you get one chance to read the green and one chance to put it. Here, yeah, backwards and forwards, you can start reacting to what your eyes see as the ball turns on the brake. But out in the real world, you got one chance. So don't bother practicing it. All you're doing is reinforcing the fact that you're crap at putting. There you go, four out of four. Right, so that's all I do for the putting really, is I practice my four footers and I hear the ball rattle in the hole. I had a spot of bother tonight, didn't I? Next step is chipping. Now I know a lot of guys will putt from eight, nine, ten feet or more from off the green, but you don't always get that luxury and you're neglecting a part of your game if you do. So chipping is the next stage. Now how do you set up for a chip? Or rather, let's start with what you chip with. Now you can take the option where you chip with six clubs and each you take the same swing with each club and each club the ball goes further. But I think as a beginner, somebody who's shooting mid 90s and you're looking to break 90 you really need to concentrate on two clubs one to make the ball roll and one to put the ball in the air and I would recommend the sand wedge for that because you need the bounce you know 60 degrees that the pros use and 64s they're not really very good for us problem is is they don't have any bounce so it's very easy to knife it and it's very easy to stick the leading edge in the ground and duff it. You know I've seen a guy take three shots from 20 yards with a 60 degree before he's got it on the green because he's gone underneath the ball and all the ball does is pop up and go down again. All he's done is move it four or five yards. Now as a high handicapper a 60 degree is very very difficult to use. So your two clubs that you're going to choose, I would put at least 10 degrees of loft difference between them. I use a sand wedge and I use a pitching wedge and there's, there's 10 degrees of loft difference between those. Now setting up, we want the ball back a little bit. We set the ball back in our stance and our hands forward and we stand very open to the shot. We get this left hip out of the way and we actually preset our impact position with a weight on the left side and the hands forward, the hands leading. What's the stroke like? Well, it's not breaking your wrists, it's not flipping at it, it's not trying to help the ball in the air. What you want is this left hand, the back of this left hand, or right hand if you're left-handed, you want to lead the shot all the way through. You want, if you like, a putting stroke. And I always consider this putting with loft. What I'm going to do is make a putting stroke. I'm not going to flip at it. As soon as I flip at it, well, I've knifed it 30 yards. So let me get set up here. Now the practice area has been hollow timed, scraped, seeded, sanded. So it's not in the best of shape. Now I've got a right to left putt here. It's about three or four feet of break and I've got a stiff neck so I'm struggling to turn to the left to look at where I'm aiming but here's the setup feet are narrow I don't want my legs to do anything the ball is back the hands are forward now some people like to go down the shaft get closer to that club head get more feel if that's you that's fine 
If you can chip full length like I do, that's fine also. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you don't flip at this and it's just a little putting stroke. The club head does not overtake the hands. It's all, it's like this. It's a putting stroke for goodness sake. There's nothing difficult about it at all. <laughs> that one just dropped in without me looking. I just heard it go plop. Now that time wasn't so good, that was a bit of a... So I've got to preset the weight onto my left side, preset my hands in front, and they stay there for the entire stroke. And I thinned it. I'm thinking too much, I didn't thin, I've just had a little practice, I didn't thin a single one or chunk a single one, but that's... That's the camera, that's the microphone. Preset the weight, preset the hands, preset the, the conditions and hit it poorly. Yeah, you're gonna have to give me a little bit of license here because I'm yakking instead of concentrating. Yeah, these aren't pretty, are they? See, I haven't done this for a little while. Well, when you ask, um, how much should I practice? The answer is, is how good do you want to be? I practice this as much as I can. When I can. Recently, I haven't. Which is why I'm hitting these little duff ones. Right, just relax. And there we go, there's a proper one. Stand open to the target, the ball's back, the hands forward, preset the weight into the impact position and just put basically. That one almost went in. Let's try a few more. Sweet. Right, I'll go pick those up and then we'll, uh, we'll shove the camera around. Right, I've picked a spot where there's a little bit more grass to give me a better chance of doing this. So I'm going to go to that slightly further flag. I'm not interested in how long it is. I just want to show you the technique. So as you can see, my stance is open. The ball is back. and then we play a little putt. Yeah, gonna see some big bounces off these hollow tine holes. I mean, that's scooted off, what, eight, nine feet left. That's basically all we're gonna do. Stand open. Ball back, hands forward, weight forward, preset the impact position, and then put. Took an easy little divot there. Yeah, I'm sorry, but the state of the practice area, as it's had its winter maintenance, is not going to be conducive to producing good bounces and good rollouts, but uh, that's life. Yeah, nice bounce to the right. There's a lot of ball marks on here. A lot of people are, you know, they're hitting that flop shot and what have you and coming down high and leaving a lot of ball marks. Right, so this is our club for rolling it along the ground. Next thing we've got to do is to pick a club to go up. Right, putting the ball in the air. Now the club I choose is the sand wedge. And the reason I choose the sand wedge 
is this. This is called the bounce. This is the fact that the trailing edge is lower than the leading edge. And if we open the face, then the trailing edge gets even lower. What this does is it stops us digging it in the ground. It helps us get it out of grass. It helps us get it out of a bunker. This trailing edge helps stops the club from just going down and down and down. So that's why I choose it. And when I play uh, to get up in the air, if I've got a fluffy lie, then I, I will actually open the, open the blade a little bit and increase this bounce. And that is what helps me get it up and over problems. So, I gotta go over this bunker. I'm in the rough. I've got at least 12 yards here. Now I'm gonna play it very similar to the, uh, to the along the ground shot. The only difference is, is as I say, instead of having this square face, is I'm just gonna rotate it a fraction. And I do mean a fraction. Have a slightly open face. Let's see if I can do one. So it's gonna be a bit longer, but it's more or less the same thing. It's still kind of like putting with loft. I've still got my weight on my left side. I'm still presetting my impact position. Now it's up on the dance floor. Now this is, especially with a bunker in front, this is where people get, they get so tense. They squeeze the life out of the club and they pump up their forearms and then they got they, they've got no movement. Once you're squeezing the life out of this, you're duffing in there. So you really do have to be very loose. And you have to accelerate. Any deceleration on this, you've had it. nice shots. Yeah, I think my chipping over there was pretty poor because of the state of the actual... Uh, I'm digging a hole here with my sandwich. Yeah, because of the state of the ground there. Now that looks very, very lazy. It does look... Ooh, he's decelerating. It's so lazy. But actually, it's just smooth. Get in. So, let me spin you around. Oh, there isn't much space here, actually. I might have to move. But I'll spin you around and you can have a look from behind. So yeah, when you've got a shot over a bunker like this, I mean, that's pretty scary. That really is pretty scary. It's, as I say, it's about 10 yards up to that green. So it's sand wedge, because you want the bounce. Open the face a fraction, because you want the bounce. I'm stood open. If, I'm, if I was to drop a line across my feet, I'm aiming about five yards left of this. Very, very light grip and accelerate. It's up on the dance floor. What you don't want to be doing from here, and I've seen it quite a lot, the guy gets out his 60 degree, and he lays the face flat, moves the ball forward, and he tries one of these. And it's in the bunker, because he made absolutely zero contact with the golf ball. Yeah, if you're shooting 95, don't take the driver out of your bag. You need that. Take your 60 degree out of the bag because you certainly don't need that. Just accelerate.
You don't even need a long backswing as long as you're accelerating. You've got to keep this club head moving. Let's try this with a very short backswing just to prove my point. And he hits his pile of balls. Yes, not far from the flag. So there you go. One club for rolling out, one club for getting up. Now I know you're going to say, what if it's really sat down? Well, here's a bit of virgin grass I haven't actually stood on yet. So let's push that down as hard as I can. All right, this is slightly different. This time I'm going to move it a little further back than I have been. I'm going to have a square club face and I really do have to dig a little bit for this one. Weight on the left side. And it's up on the dance floor and I've had to dig for it. So there you go. It's not far from the hole actually. And how many of these do you do? Well, I'll tell you what, if, if you were teeing off at say 1 p.m. on a Saturday, why don't you get up here for 10 o'clock? Bring your tuba balls, bring your pitching wedge, your sand wedge, whatever clubs you've chosen to use. Bloody practice. I mean, they're all good. And because you've practiced your four footers, hopefully better than I did, then you're not under any pressure to get it as close as you think you have to. That's, you know, four feet left, four feet right, or even five feet left, five feet right, five feet short, five feet long. That's a bloody big circle from, what is this? Probably about a 13 yard shot. Only just got up that one. Well, there you go. I suppose the next thing we ought to do is get in there. Not my Sunday best, I think you'll agree. But how did I do that? Especially as we've had heavy rain and all of this is uh, very beaten down rock hard, as you can see. Well, the first thing is, is the ball goes forward. It goes to your instep of your left foot, much like you would do your driver. You get your feet in the sand don't forget the toes. It's so easy to put your heels in because that is where your weight is. Hang on, I, I don't think this... I don't think I'm in the picture. There we go. That might be a bit better. So you got to wriggle your toes in. Now I use full length shaft here. Now you open the face. Now the way you do it you don't grip the club and open the face because when you come back to impact, it's going to be square again. So you open the face and then you grip it. And the amount you open the face will depend on how high is the lip and how far you want the ball to go. Obviously, if you open it right up, it's not going to go very far. So as I was saying, you wriggle your feet in and you get your toes in as well as your heels. Then you want to squat down. You want to squat down as if you're going to try and take a dump two feet behind you. Really, really, because that flattens out the club path through the sand. And it's a full swing, especially when I open the face up that much. But you can see uh, I'm not throwing it high in the air because this is not powdery. This is quite firm after the rain. Wriggle the toes in. Make sure the club face is open. 
squat like you're taking a dump behind you. Not the prettiest thing I've ever hit, but it's out. And that's all we want at this stage is out. If you're trying to break 90, you don't want to be having three or four shots in here, like my dad did. I remember my dad, I, he was playing President's Day and he'd got in one of the bunkers by the side of the 18th green in two, and he had several thrashes, couldn't get it out. Had another thrash, got it out across the green into the bunker on the opposite side, have a few thrashes, eventually got it on the green. He turned to his playing partners and he said, I don't know how many I've had. Now the patio had about 100 people on it and some wag from the patio shouts, 13. So you don't want to do me dad and be on the green in 13. So see how I rig get, try and get the toes in first before I put my weight towards my heels. Open it up. Squat like you're taking a dump behind you and take a swing. And that's the penalty for rather firm bunker. Got far too much golf ball there. Perhaps I should have raked this first. Now, one thing I would say, don't do this before you play golf because you're gonna go onto the first tee after all this practice of coming across the ball and you're gonna hit a monster slice. So do this on a day when you're not playing golf. That is so important. See, my target line is sort of like that way, but my feet line are that way and I'm swinging along the line of my feet over there to the left. Let's see if I can hit another one after that semi knife. Nice and easy side, don't go killing snakes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna to have to rake this. But anyway, that's that is the basics. Now I know you're gonna to say to me, well, what if I've got a a difficult one? Like right up the face here. If I can make the ball stop at the face. Let's just push it in a little bit. Well, the difficult bit is getting your stance when you're right at the face, especially if there's a lot of sand here. So get your feet solid. Get the face open, the ball forward, and then really swing hard to get this one up in the air. And I just... One of the things with the practice bunker is all the sand finishes up at the face. Let's try it again. Try and get in a little bit closer to the ball. And we're up and out and stopped within a couple of inches. So yeah, there's different ways of tackling. I'm gonna have to rake this because all the, all the sand's up there. Now what do you do if the ball's only just plopped over the edge of the bunker? Well, I've got no backswing. You probably can't see that. So if you've got no backswing, you can't go that way. You can't go towards the green. So you simply play sideways. Play it out there, chip it on. Hopefully get the putt. Can't be avoided sometimes, that's just life. Now, if you do want to hit the, this ball a long way, perhaps you've got a 40 yard green and the flag's at the back and you're in the front bunker, you got 35 yards. Well, it's the same setup, only this time, we don't really open the face that much. So we still wriggle in. We move the ball a fraction back. We don't want it all the way forwards this time. We don't open the face as much. Don't go in there as if you're trying to kill snakes. Let's try another one because I wasn't happy with that. 
get your toes in. There we go, there's a nice long one. Loaded with spin as well, because you've come out of sand. So, really the best way of getting out of a bunker, really, is don't go in them in the first place. Sounds a bit crazy, but I play away from bunkers because I know I'm likely to drop a shot. If I miss on the right side of this green over there, I'm probably going to chip and putt. If I miss here, yeah, I can get it out of the bunker, but the chances of me getting it to four feet are rather slim. So when you're out on the golf course, when you're planning your shot into the green, where are the bunkers? How can I avoid getting in this? And then you won't, after your round, you won't go in the clubhouse and say, oh, the bunkers were rock hard after rain. I couldn't get out of them or I knifed it out of them. Don't go in them. Now, the sad thing is, is because this is rock hard, I can't hit the big high one. Let's see if I can hit the big high one, squat down. Yeah, I'm getting too much golf ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rake this, pick my balls up and we'll try again. Now here's something for you. You can become part of the 1%. What the 1% does is they rake away. Most people rake back out the bunker. So all the sand is at the back of the bunker here and there's no sand up the face. I think when it's beaten down this hard, being the practice bunker, all the, bunk, all the sand gets fired up the face. I'll tell you what, if I can stir this up enough, I'll come back and do some more. Well, a productive evening. So this is what you've got to do really to break 90, is practice on the green, practice round the greens. You know, practice your four footers. It's so important to go out on the golf course knowing that you're gonna hold your four footers. It really does relieve the pressure. I, I can assure you, you practice four footers every time you come to the golf course, your scores will go down. That's a promise. Now, uh, chip in. Find yourself two clubs. Resist the urge to use your 60 and your 64. They don't have the bounce on them. They've got a nice sharp edge and you catch it a tiny bit fat and the divot's going further than the ball. So put those away. Get something like a wedge or a nine iron, depending on the loft of your clubs, and you use that for all your chip and runs, for all your rolling shots when there's nothing between you and the flag. And you can actually use it from quite a way out. You know, you can use a nine iron from 40 yards out if you want to, or even an eighth iron if you're afraid of putting the ball in the air with your sand wedge or one of your other wedges, you just roll it. The old man's chip and run. It's a very, very useful shot. And then you need some loft for going up and for going over things. I say the sand wedge is the popular one because of the bounce and the fact that you can open the face and put a little bit more bounce on it. And then outer bunkers stand fairly wide. Don't stand narrow like a chip, stand fairly wide. Get that ball forward, almost in the position where you'd put your driver, inside this left heel. Stand open to the shot. Open the face of the club, then grip it. And then to settle it, just kind of like squat down like you're trying to take a shit behind you. I mean, I'm not talking like down here, I'm just talking about just putting a little bit of extra flex. And don't forget to dig your toes in. Very easy to dig the heels in the sand. Make sure you get your toes in. Get your toes in first. That'll help you, no end. So now you've got these short game skills. Your chipping is getting better. You've got a solid four foot putt or five foot putt. 
that takes an awful lot of pressure out of this end of the game. Yeah, tea's still empty. Once you've got the pressure out of this end of the game, once you are getting better here, when you can turn three shots into two on a regular basis, then that lack of pressure goes all the way back to your approach shot. If you don't have to hit a green, then you'll find that you will actually hit more greens because you're not under pressure. You'll relax with, with your six iron and your seven iron shots and you'll hit more greens. But if you don't hit the green, that's fine because you can get it up and down. You can save your score. And if it doesn't matter if you hit the green, then it doesn't matter if you kind of like hit the fairway from off the tee box. Obviously you want to. But because there's so little pressure, because at the end of it you can hold a four foot putt and save your par, you'll find you'll hit more fairways too, because you won't be stood on that tee, strangling the life out of your driver or whatever your tee club is. You'll actually be loose, you'll be free, you'll swing better, you'll find the middle of the bat and you'll find the, the middle of the fairway far more often, just because you can hold every four foot putt that you look at. If you don't believe me, I don't mind, because it's your game, it's your life, you do what you please, but if you really want to get better, can every four foot putt you look at, you'll be surprised at how much your score will drop. And get your chipping practiced. How much do you practice? How much daylight is there? Well, not much. But I ain't stopping. I got a tube full of balls. I got a wedge. I got a sand wedge. I'm going to keep going. Cheerio.